All right, so the first question we've got here from Caden Hixey is, do you have any plans on making further upgrades to TIV-2 besides regular maintenance, such as adding a second pair of side flaps to cover the back tires, and maybe even bringing the rear flap back to go with the rear spikes? Right now, it's mostly just the regular maintenance. We're just trying to keep the thing on the road. So we, we've been dealing with a lot of drivetrain issues uh, still, just trying to get that ironed out. And then once we get that done, and we'll start thinking about the upgrade side of it. The back flap thing though, um, I don't think we're gonna be bringing the back flap uh, back anytime soon, just because it was too much weight on the rear end, which caused too many axles to break. So we've decided to go ahead and ixnay that for now and hopefully stay on the road a little bit longer. The second question from him is, thoughts on Titus from End of the Storm, and did Warner Brothers need permission from Sean to build the vehicle? I read a long time ago that they needed to pay him to add the turret, but I don't remember where or if I just dreamed it. That would be a Sean Casey uh, question, sadly. Uh, that was, of course, happening before we had owner, well, the Storm of Passion team had ownership of it. So I couldn't really tell you the dealings between that, sadly. They definitely took a lot of cues from Tiv2 here. So it's interesting to see that, but how the movie portrayed out, uh, maybe not the best view of things. All right, their third question is, which is heavier, Tiv1 or Tiv2? Tiv2, all day. I mean, that thing is 14,000 pounds. It's got another axle on it, four more tires in the rear, a lot more armor on it. It's just a lot heavier. We're going, going to go on to the next question here uh, from Havoc Shark. Has Sean ever asked to use it for a project? Actually, just last year, uh, he got in contact with us about going out and doing a little movie project, but that kind of fell through. So for now, not probably going to happen for a while, but there is a possibility that we will get back together with Sean at some point. He is actually out now uh, in his Suba Tib is what we call it. It's a Subaru Outback that he's put spikes, Lexan, and Rhino line. So he's still out there chasing nowadays, but just not in this thing anymore. The next question comes from the Gog Fro. How much does it cost to keep up and what is, was the price range building this beautiful beast? The last repair was about five grand. So if that can put it into perspective of how much it costs to keep up and maintain the vehicle. Um, in total, I would have to say there's probably at least 500K put into the vehicle. Uh, in total, building it, repairing it, upgrades, everything. So it's got a decent chunk of money put into it at this point. All right, the next question comes from uh, x Once 47 How deep do the Tiv2 spikes go? I couldn't give you an exact answer on it at the moment, but once we get it on the lift next time, uh, maybe that's something I could test is getting the spikes fully deployed out and see how far they actually come out. So that's a good idea for next time uh, we have it up and I'll let you know the answer to that. Uh, he also asked, what is the biggest tornado it's been in? Uh, the 2013 uh, Lebanon, Kansas tornado, up north of here actually, it got up to 175 mile per hour wind speeds on the anemometer before it broke off. So it went through some pretty decent winds that day. All right, the next question comes in from Aviation Doge. What protection does TIV-2 offer? Well, once you get into the thing, you realize how thick the armor truly is. You can, you know, you grab the sidewall of it and you're just like, oh, that's solid. You just feel protected in there. We've gone through some insane hailstorms before and, you know, you're just getting pelted by stones and they're just shattering apart and no damage to the tip. It's a very, very sturdy vehicle. All right, the next question comes from Kunahik. What is currently planned for the future of TIV-2 upgrades, events, etc.? Uh, for now, the current upgrades are just more keeping it on the road. We're just trying to still figure out the drive line, the drive train, everything like that, just to keep it rolling down the road safely and not causing us more issues. So we then can think about doing more upgrades to it, you know, stuff like that. The uh, next event that we're planning on going to, uh, I'm not quite sure yet. I think we're going to be doing an event up in uh, Colorado, possibly on the 4th of July, but we're still kind of iffy on that at the moment. Kunahik's next question is, will you ever add an anemometer back onto TIV-2 or other scientific instruments? We would love to add another anemometer to the thing, but it just comes down to cost. And the reality of it is, we just aren't sure if we want to spend 
that kind of money putting a new uh, anemometer on it every time we get into some storms because they have a high risk of getting damaged out there. And when they're $1,000 a pop, it kind of makes it a little difficult to uh, want to continue purchasing them. The next question comes in from Electro Klaus. How long does it take TIV-2 to deploy? Let's find out. All right. And uh, three, two, one, let's deploy this thing. There we go.